Hi, and welcome to the Delaware Resident OBGYN Lecture Series. I'm your host, Jim Manley. Today we're going to speak about GYN ultrasound, specifically the use of ultrasound in the management of intrauterine contraceptive devices. With us today are PGY2 residents Andrew Ward and Patricia Lowe. Hi, my name is Patricia Lowe. And I'm Andrew Ward. Today we'll discuss the use of ultrasound in the management of intrauterine contraceptive devices, or IUCDs. First, let's briefly review the use of IUCDs for the sonographer. Intrauterine contraception is among the safest and most effective methods requiring minimal user effort. It is the most common method of reversible contraception used worldwide. There are two types of IUCDs used in the United States. First, the copper type, brand name Paragard, and the progestin releasing type, named Mirena. <clears throat> the copper type is approved to remain in place for 10 years, though it appears to be safe and effective for 20 years. The progestin releasing type is approved for 5 years. The copper type may be chosen for patients who desire to avoid exposure to hormones, such as those with breast cancer within 5 years, those desiring longer term contraception, those desiring emergency contraception, among other reasons. The progestin releasing type may be chosen in those desiring non contraceptive benefits of reducing heavy or painful menses, also, among other reasons. Ultrasound has been used primarily to determine the location of a previously inserted device. Failure to visualize the string of the IUCD coming from the cervix raises concern about expulsion from the patient, as well as malposition within the uterus, and migration elsewhere in the abdomen. When the string is not visualized, the distinction between expulsion and migration must be made. If a pregnancy test is negative, a hook or clamp may be used to retrieve the string and the device can continue to be used. As this step can cause patient discomfort, this step is often skipped in favor of a pelvic ultrasound. If the IUCD is not seen in the uterine cavity, a plain film x-ray of the abdomen must be ordered. Since ultrasound is frequently used to evaluate other gynecologic problems, the discovery of a malpositioned IUCD is not uncommon and the clinician is faced with a management decision. It is the job of the sonographer to accurately describe the position or malposition of the IUCD. A normally positioned IUCD will be located in the fundus of the uterus, with the vertical portion of the device pointing straight to the internal cervical os and the arms fully extended, pointing to the cornua. The following illustration come from a very good review of IUCD malpositioning in OBGYN management, August 2012, by Bratton and Goldberg. A malpositioned IUCD can be described as, <clears throat> number one, in the cervix or lower uterine segment, second, embedded in the myometrium, third, partially expelled, four, rotated, five, protruding through the uterine serosa or entirely outside the uterus. Lastly, the IUCD may have perforated the uterus and be located entirely intra-abdominally. The sonographer may be interested in why the clinician would be interested in the malposition of an IUCD. The three considerations the clinician has are, one, damage that can be caused, two, symptoms caused for the patient, three, effectiveness in preventing pregnancy. About 15% of perforated IUCDs can cause bowel injury. For this reason, intra-abdominal IUCDs are retrieved by laparotomy or by laparoscopy. A study found malpositioned IUCDs in 17% of 167 patients with an IUCD in place. Of those with a malpositioned device, 75% had symptoms of bleeding or pain compared to only 35 of those with a normally placed device. 20 of the 21 with a malpositioned device reported improvement in symptoms upon removal. The efficacy of malpositioned IUCDs in pregnancy is not known, as a large number of known to be malpositioned IUCDs would need to be followed prospectively. Limited evidence suggests that cervically located copper IUCDs have a higher risk of pregnancy. Levonogestrel IUCDs appear to be effective even while malpositioned, but again, the risk of pregnancy is not known. Incidentally, most downwardly displaced devices those more than three millimeters from the fundus will migrate into place within three months. This knowledge may prevent unnecessary removal of a device. In fact, a study shows that the pregnancy rate is higher in those with a malpositioned device removed than with a malpositioned device in place. A malpositioned device is not uncommon and may have significant consequences. Some malpositions are very suggestive of achieving malposition upon insertion rather than chronic migration. This evidence includes myometrial penetration in line with the cervical canal in a flexed uterus or with arms overhead in the myometrium, rather than deployed laterally. 
When it comes to imaging IUCDs, usually 2D ultrasound is adequate. Uh, the shaft of the device is echogenic and usually can be seen within the endometrial cavity. In this picture, we can see a transabdominal uh, view of the uterus through the bladder, and you can see the echogenic shaft in the uterus. Here, transvaginally, again, the echogenic shaft can be seen within the uterus um, at the top of the uterine cavity next to the uterine fundus. In this example, this is an antiverted retroflexed uterus that can be seen after a previous cesarean section. This acquired axis change can result in difficulty inserting the device, and in this case we can see the echogenic shaft in the cervix. In this picture we can see the acoustic shadow of the shaft rather than the shaft itself. We can see the tip and the fundus and to the right of the screen we can see the echogenic strings of the device. Now the arms of the device can be difficult to see. They are thinner and less echogenic than the shaft. They frequently are located in the fundus as they should be uh, and the fundus may not be uh, as accessible, um, either abdominally or transvaginally, and for that reason very difficult to image. Noting the position of the shaft is important in answering the question of contraceptive effectiveness, but knowing the position of the arms is important in determining uh, their role in causing symptoms of bleeding or pain. 2D ultrasound uh, is inconsistent in its ability to determine the position of the arms, whether the device is rotated uh, and the arms are embedded in the myometrium. The 3D ultrasound is very useful for this and is more consistent uh, than the 2D ultrasound. 3D ultrasound is useful in displaying the coronal view of the uterus, which shows the endometrial cavity. The Z technique described by Dr. Abu Hamid is an efficient method for manipulating a 3D volume uh, to quickly get the coronal view of the endometrial cavity, uh, and that is the view that the IUCD should be seen. With the Z technique, a 3D volume is acquired transvaginally. The reference dot is moved to the middle of the endometrial echo and then the uterus is rotated around that reference on the z-axis until the endometrial echo is horizontal. Next, in the axial view of the uterus, the reference point is moved to the middle of the endometrial cavity and rotated around the point on the z-axis until horizontal. The third remaining view will be the coronal view, that of the endometrial cavity. The reference box is narrowed to contain only the endometrium. Since intrauterine contraception is as effective as sterilization, it is unusual to see a coexisting pregnancy, but it does happen. In this picture, we see a gestational sac and a yolk sac, and anteriorly an echogenic area. In this transverse view, you can see the acoustic shadow of the device across the gestational sac. In this next picture, we can see the crown rump length, consistent with about six and a half weeks with cardiac activity. On 3D, you can see the intrauterine contraceptive device uh, adjacent to the viable pregnancy. In this 2D ultrasound, we can see the shaft of the IUCD uh, well placed in the fundus. This patient had bleeding and pain, and the 2D ultrasound was reassuring. The 3D ultrasound did provide some additional information in showing that the arm of the device was embedded in the myometrium. Um, while this probably retained its contraceptive efficacy, it may be the explanation for her symptoms and removal was considered. Here's an example of where 3D is uh, interesting but not necessarily um, required. 
the shaft is clearly visible in the cervix and this was known to be a malpositioned device. The 3D view does show clearly uh, that the device is in the cervix with the arms deployed laterally, but the 3D is certainly not necessary. Other times the 3D can be more useful. In this view we've got a device that's lower, located in the lower uterine segment you know, between the endometrial cavity and the cervix and uh, one could guess that this would migrate uh, fundally but the 3D suggested with the one arm deployed overhead and the other embedded in the myometrium that this migration was unlikely and that removal was given more serious consideration. In this patient the string was not visualized at her annual examination and a pelvic ultrasound was ordered. Um, the device was noted to be properly placed in the endometrial cavity and you can see that the string uh, trails uh, downward toward the cervix but curls back upward and this is a case where uh, the device is left in place knowing that it is properly placed and effective despite not being able to see the string. In this patient, the string could not be visualized. The pelvic ultrasound showed that the endometrial cavity was clearly empty. In the 2D sagittal view, there was a suspicious echogenic area immediately behind the uterus. Um, this warranted a flat plate for not being able to find the device, and it was shown to be uh, outside the uterus. This device was retrieved laparoscopically without difficulty. There are some instances where ultrasound guidance is used for the insertion of IUCDs. Usually these are cases where there's difficult uterine anatomy or there's already been an IUCD inserted um, and was found to be malpositioned. Um, if it was thought that this, was, uh, this malposition resulted uh, at the time of insertion, uh, ultrasound guidance may be used to assure that uh, a normal position is obtained. This was a symptomatic patient uh, with uh, bleeding and pain who had a 2D ultrasound that showed that clearly the device had uh, been embedded in the posterior myometrium. It seems to be nearly in the same axis as the cervix, suggesting that it was placed there during insertion rather than migration. The 3D ultrasound confirmed that the uterine cavity was empty with the exception of uh, part of the device in the cervix. The patient had her device removed and a new one reinserted. Unfortunately, the false tract produced by the original device um, was where the new device went, um, resulting in the same position. This patient uh, ultimately did uh, undergo IUD insertion uh, with ultrasound guidance uh, and ultimately had a correct position. At our center, a pre-insertion sonogram is performed. The orientation of the uterus is determined whether the uterus is aniverted, retroverted, or of an axial position. The orientation of the uterine fundus to the cervix is determined as well, whether there is antiflexion, retroflexion, or a neutral position. The length of the uterine cavity from external cervical os to the fundus of the cavity is determined. Then a coronal image of the uterine cavity is obtained using the Z technique described by Abu Hamid. This is to rule out abnormalities of the uterine cavity, either congenital or acquired, as with myomas. The sonographer displays the sagittal view of the uterus while the clinician passes the introducer to the fundus. The sonographer may provide direction if the instrument does not align with the axis of the cavity. The sonographer may indicate to the clinician, or the clinician may see the screen, as to when the fundus is reached to avoid fundal perforation. After insertion, 3D coronal imaging is performed to demonstrate proper positioning. In the event of future malposition, there will have been documentation that this insertion had been successful.